Hello everybody and welcome to this Unreal Engine 5.1 optimization video. Today I wanted to talk about optimization and specifically in 5.1 because a lot of us are trying to use the new Lumen system. A lot of people don't even know what that is whenever they're a new developer. They don't know what baking lights is. They don't know what shadow maps are. They wonder why the frame rate's low and they don't know how to go about diagnosing exactly what it is. So today we're gonna talk about how we're gonna go about that. What we're gonna do on the bottom here is you're gonna see something that says enter console command. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna type in the word profile, all lowercase, and then GPU, all uppercase, and then press enter. Now, what do we have going on here? Right now, if you look over here on the right hand side, uh, do remember I am recording, so this is a bit lower than normal, but I'm getting about 55 frames a second. Well, if we wanted to increase that, obviously we could lower our graphics. I think all mine are set to epic right now, maybe not quite, but we get this little box right here when we type in the profile GPU, and each of these bars is essentially how much processing time it takes for that individual three thing to go through the GPU. So right now, the biggest thing is this right here. If you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what it is. Right now it's the diffuse, indirect, and the ambient occlusion. So if we click on that, uh, down here you'll see that it even highlighted it. And we can hit this little carrot here to expand it. And each thing is getting a, um, a value or a duration on the right hand side. So overall the diffuse indirect and AO is at about 4.29. But then we look, we have lumen screen probe gather. We have the translucency and the lumen reflection. Well, the lumen screen probe gather is what's causing the biggest issue. So if we expand it yet again, we can then further look into exactly what is causing the highest amount of load time. I'm gonna start with the 0.49 here, the update radiance caches. I don't know exactly what that is, but let's troubleshoot and figure this out. And we'll go ahead and click on this first one because we do know that it is the indirect lighting cache and we know that we're using Lumen. Let's read this first two lines. CPU light mass generates light maps for indirect lighting on static objects. But dynamic objects like characters need a method of receiving indirect lighting as well. Uh, this is solved by the indirect lighting cache, which uses samples generated by light mass uh, at build time to calculate the indirect lighting for dynamic objects. So basically what I'm hearing here is we have too many dynamic objects, which is pushing up the updated radiance cache. So what I'm going to do is take a look at my static meshes. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into all of my cube grids. I'm gonna select every single one of these. And I'm going to look over here on the right hand side. You'll see that we have a mobility setting. If we were to set this to anything except static, it's going to require a cache in order to have dynamic lighting because the game thinks it might move. So let's set this all to static. If you look, we've already went up to about 67 FPS. Let's go ahead and do the uh, profile GPU again. And notice that the green bar is now smaller. So what I wanna do is continue to try to shrink this bar. And I think I can probably do that as well by going into my static meshes. So this is all the meshes that are taking place in this scene. I'm going to grab the top one, scroll to the bottom, shift click the bottom one, and note that look, there's no option selected here, which means that some of them are considered movable, which again means that the dynamic lighting is building a cache to generate dynamic lighting on them, but we don't need that. So let's set them to static. So the static meshes didn't increase the FPS too much, but let's go ahead and check our profile again. About the same. So we didn't really get a lot out of that. So let's go ahead and start digging into more things that might be causing issues. As you can see, the updated radiance cache went from 4.6 or 4.9 to 4.6. So we got a little bit of an increase, but I think we can do better. 
let's expand this and take a look and see what kind of information it is giving us. Let's try to focus on the larger numbers. So for example, right here, we have trace from probe res 32 by 32. Let's go to Google and see what this does. So we're not finding anything specific, but let's go to the dynamic resolution and let's see if it finds what we want. So I'm glad I'm having issues with this one because I know a lot of people might give up here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into our project settings. Now here's the thing about the project settings. If you don't 100% know what something does, either don't mess with it or make sure you turn it back. So let's go into our rendering settings because a lot of the time, especially whenever we're dealing with the GPU, it's something to do with rendering. So I'm gonna do a couple of searches really quick. Let's type in the word trace and see what comes up. We have something about trace channels, but I don't believe I have any. And it looks like I have something to do with Niagara here. We have hardware ray tracing. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to go about disabling this. In fact, I'm gonna dis disable both of these. Now, again, I don't 100% know what that does, so let's go take a look and see. As of right now, our project seems pretty similar. The, the frame rate's a little low, but that's because I have all of the geometry selected. Let's see if it affected our load time on the diffuse. Right now, our diffuse is sitting at 4.65. Oh, and it also says we need to restart. So what I'm gonna do is get a benchmark of where we're sitting. We're still sitting at about uh, 60 frames a second. Let's go ahead and save and restart and uh, see where this goes. Okay, so now we're sitting at about 70 frames a second. So what I wanna do is pull up the profile GPU and see where we're sitting time-wise on the diffuse. 4.35, so we dropped it by 0.3, which is pretty good. Let's double check though, did that actually affect the tracing? It did, because if you notice, now we don't have any form of trace from probes going on. Now, something to remember, obviously I'm changing settings a little willy-nilly. This is a project I'm working on, and you have to remember that everything that you do that is going to increase your frame rate and load times is going to affect the quality um, that you are going to get both in your preview here as well as whenever the player is actually playing the game. But there are things that are on by default that some of us don't take advantage of. Like for example, getting rid of those traces, I see no difference in my quality and we increased the runtime, or rather decreased the runtime. I'm not advocating changing settings all gung-ho, but it's good to experiment and it's good to learn this way. I brought up this video mostly because I needed to learn a little bit more about this stuff as well, and this is an absolutely fantastic tool that I wanted to show and share with you guys so you can look into cleaning up your settings to have the most optimal experience. Even if it was only a little, I hope this taught you guys something please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you have amazing optimization tips, leave them in the comments section below. I would love to read through them, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers would love to learn as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.